Harry, grab a pen and a paper because today is Wedding Planning 101. I'm sharing with you 10 things you need to know about the Ghana wedding industry before you even think of planning your own wedding. And like I always say, hit that subscribe button and let's get started. <laughs> This wedding knowledge topic has been on my to-do list for a couple of years now. These things I'm about to share with you are things I think you need to use to psych yourself before you even think of planning your own wedding. Even if you are a bridesmaid, you are a groomsman, you are a wedding guest, you are father of the bride, mother of the bride, sister of the bride, friend of the bride, it's something, it's basic, it's not tailored to just bride and groom. Everybody should know about this. Think of it as going to the university with a mattress. What? Yes, right. Yet every year it happens. Every single year, someone will definitely go to the university with a mattress. That's the same way with the wedding planning industry. Some things you think, oh, this is common knowledge. But then a situation will rise up and then you realize that this is not so common as you thought. The first thing on my list is going to be that venues book out fast. If you ask me, there are not enough event centers or reception halls in Ghana, especially in Accra and especially in the festive season to accommodate the number of weddings we have each weekend. So I feel that if you are planning or you're about to start planning your wedding, one of the first things or the first thing that you should do is to book your venue. Don't wait, don't sit at home and create a timeline for yourself or think of, oh, okay, if it's three months or four months or even six months to my wedding, then I start looking for venues. Trust me, you will cry or you would have venues that honestly it's not really exactly what you want so book your venue as soon as possible if you ask me as soon as you are proposed to or you're ready for marriage research tour and book your wedding venue immediately i talk more about this in my how much ghana weddings cost video so i'm going to link that up for you my next point is that you must read understand and sign every wedding vendor's contract before you are going to work with any wedding supplier it is important to take time and review their contract which means you should expect a contract from every vendor you are using on your wedding day or you plan to use on your wedding day i mean with the exception of one-off purchases like um bouquets tiaras accessories and all those things those ones i mean you shouldn't obviously expect a contract from them but for those that their services involves um custom works payments in installment and all that stuff it is crucial that you sign an agreement with them before you start working with them. These contracts are legally binding, so you want to ensure that both you and your supplier are fully protected. 9 out of 10, there is no need or there wouldn't be anything in it that you want to amend. But at least it's giving you the peace of mind knowing that if anything should happen, you have legal backing. Hiring wedding suppliers and venues involves dealing with a large amount of money. I mean, you are giving money to people you barely know. So you owe it to yourself at least an hour to read that contract that they provided for you to give you that peace of mind in knowing that you are safeguarded when it comes to any decision or anything that might affect you later on in the wedding planning process. It may not be the most fun part of planning your wedding, but trust me, it is the most important part of planning your wedding. I had an incident that happened a couple of years ago between a client and her photographer. So apparently she signed the contract and then um, and everything was cool, but she didn't even read it. And in the contract, it stated that the photographer demands full payment before um, showing up on the wedding day. Yet this woman didn't read about the contract. And then when it was time to actually make full payments before the wedding day, she was like, how? How can she make payment before the wedding day? when she hasn't seen the work or you haven't delivered anything about the work to her. Damn! And they were fighting back and forth between them and all that stuff. And that's also another important thing I need to stress on. The fact I said read and sign a contract doesn't mean you don't understand what is in it. You should be comfortable with any vendor's terms because it's their terms, so you should be comfortable with it. If someone says do this for them before they do this for you, if you're not comfortable, don't go with the vendor. But read, it's not just read, read and understand what the person's contract states and then you proceed or, or you make the decision of going with them or not. And that takes me to my third point, which is a little bit tied to the um, second point. I gave it away at the latter part. So my third point is going to be that you should fully pay each vendor especially if they demand it you should pay each vendor before your wedding day while it is absolutely typical of wedding vendors to demand for full payments before the wedding day itself personally i feel it is one less thing you have to worry about before your wedding day or even on your wedding day itself i mean if you've made the payment you know that you don't owe anybody you're going into your wedding completely debt free right it's when wedding adrenaline wears off that's when couples now question the importance of booking um a 10,000 cities um hairstylist as compared to a 2,000 cities hairstylist or a 20,000 CDs DJ as compared to a 5,000 CDs DJ. And then they try to raise baseless arguments. And this is one of the major reasons why most vendors demand or require for full payments before their wedding day. If you're afraid of losing money, well, that's why they are contracts. 
So you need to read the contracts provided and understand what happens if there is non-performance by a vendor. Just as you pay for drive throughs before you get the food, you pay for show tickets months, months before the actual show. Did you not pay for Beyonce's ticket before the show? I mean, Taylor Swift and all that. Don't you pay before the show? You pay for plane tickets, cruises, ETC, knowing fully well that there's a chance or the probability that you might miss your flight, you might be sick before the show and all that. You still go ahead and make that payment. The same way you should be comfortable with each vendor's terms that they provide to you. Honestly, let's be real. It is not in your place to question a vendor about their business policies because you and I were not there and we don't know what prompted that vendor to install such policies in the first place. I mean, I'm not saying you can't ask questions. You can, you can, you can ask politely. That's the key word. You can ask politely why so so and so is being demanded of you. But you also have to have an open mind about it and understand that no vendor wants to rip you off. Anything that they put in their contract is coming from a previous experience. My next point is going to be don't assume, ask. Consider this the golden rule of wedding planning. There's no such thing as asking your vendors too many questions. Be sure to have a clear idea of exactly what you want and be able to communicate it effectively to your vendors. It is for this reason that having a wedding planner is of major benefit to you. Your wedding planner will know exactly what you need and will be able to relieve the pressure of that continuous back and forth between you and your vendors. The key is to have regular communication between you and your professional team. Don't just sit at home and assume that your decorator will come with cutleries and plates and fufu bowls and all that stuff or your makeup artist is going to stay throughout the um, the ceremony or the event itself. No, don't assume, ask. To my fifth point now, and that is your photographers and videographers will not arrive at the start of your dress up. But really, 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 what do you want to do with those uh, makeup shots, those before and after pictures? That is so 2013 there about, you, you get it? Where makeup artists used to compare your before and after. I mean, those things are so old, nobody does it anymore. Well, except for the makeup artists where when they are doing their transition videos and all that stuff, they want to show it. But for you, what are you doing with it? You see this face every day or you want to compare your transformation. You don't want it. Just the same way you don't want it. Photographers too won't be there to capture such images. But these are images that you yourself do not want. Well, everybody is different. I do not want a before and after image of me. That's the last thing I want to see on my wedding day. But if you are not like me and you still want such images, then you should be able to communicate it effectively to your media team. The reason why I'm saying this is because each package that you choose is mostly time bound. So if you communicate it to them that you want them to arrive at the start of your dress up, let's say your dress up will take three hours. If you communicate it to them, you you should be able to choose a package that will include that but it will be quiet off for you to choose an eight hours package and then maybe your um, event or your reception will drag into the night that means you have to pay extra time for your photographers or um, to your videographers so choose appropriate package if you prefer your media team to arrive at the start of your dress up i'm sure i've probably lost counts by now but moving on to my next point which is closely tied to the previous point give your vendors enough time to execute their works it's most likely you chose your wedding hairstylist because of the works you've seen them post online I mean, you liked it, that's why you hired them, right? Now, in order to get that work done, they need ample time to do it. So if your hairstylist says, this particular hairstyle you've chosen, they will need one hour to execute it. By all means, give them that one hour. Don't force them into, say, 15 minutes, 20 minutes duration and expect the same results from them. Trust me, it's unfair. Don't do that. Or let's say your photographer or videographer tells you that a concept that you yourself want, maybe they will need an hour and a half or 45 minutes to be able to execute it. Then you will now say, no, 45 minutes is too much. One and, one and a half hour is too much. I cannot do that. My church will be waiting. My parents will do this. You will come up with a whole lot of excuses. But then when everything is done, all is said and done, you want the same work or a replica of what they posted on their socials. Meanwhile, let's say the other couple that you saw and admired, those couple were able to um, plan their wedding, the timeline in such a way that they were able to give this photographer or this videographer that hour and half that they requested for to execute that that inspiration that thing that you so clearly like it is unfair so if you book someone and the person tells you this is the amount of time i need to be able to execute my work or to give you that same result by all means give it to them and even if and even if things don't go as planned which is typical of weddings i mean it's a life event things are bound to not go as planned if such things happen be patient don't frown. Don't act like the photographer or the videographer or the hairstylist or the MUA or whatever is now your enemy. These people are working for you. They are in your best interest. So defrown your face. I don't know if that's a word, but defrown your face. Welcome them. Even if you can squeeze, even if you can squeeze 10 minutes, 15 minutes, for them to even, if not the exact concept, that they can come up with something, a quick one on their feet to come up with it for you. It is to your benefit. So just honestly, have an open mind. That's all I'm saying. Have an open mind. Moving on to point number seven. Seven. And that is get the right person or people for the job. Just as you can put a square peg in a round hole. In wedding planning, 
you need to book the right vendors for the exact thing you want you should always choose vendors that you can trust to perform the exact job that you want them to perform for example if you want a wedding cake with really artistic sugar flowers you shouldn't book a cake artist that specializes in buttercream it doesn't make sense the same way let's say you book um a kids party MC for your wedding MC. Some can perform dual attacks, but technically or logic logically, you should get someone that specializes in the very field that you want them to perform. Another example: don't send your photographers or videographers another photographer or videographer's work style. Let's say they are shooting style or they are editing style, and expect these the person you have booked to change their style just because of you to fit what you want. It is not fair. Don't do that. Book the right person for the right job. Now to my next point, I think with the umbrella you get it, wet weather weather. Since it is impossible for any of us to control the weather, then you need to hope for the best but expect the worst. Because trust me, no matter how much you try to wing it or social media tries to make it dramatic, you and I know that is not how you planned your wedding. I mean, imagine throwing so much money into your wedding and then at the end of the day, you are standing, um, doing officiating, let's say you plan the wedding because it's an outdoor wedding that mostly gets affected and then doing the, pos the process or whatever and then it starts raining. I mean, you wouldn't want it. No matter how you try to wing it or you no matter how you try to dramatize it, you do not want it to rain on your wedding day. Trust me, it's not showers of blessing. Anybody that said that is a lie. It's not showers of blessing. You want a day that is brightly lit, that you get nice pictures, your photographer will be happy, you can get different concepts and all that stuff outdoor. So to avoid such things happening to you, have a wet weather backup plan for the West. Learn to agree to disagree. Or is it disagree to agree? Whatever, but learn something. Reality check, it is not uncommon to have a disagreement with your wedding vendor. Disagreeing with others is in fact both natural and necessary. I mean, it's normal. We all disagree. Everybody disagree. We disagree with our spouses, we disagree with our parents, we have disagreements with our friends. Everybody, it happens. It's normal. So, um, it's kind of um, quite frustrating or surprising when um, there's a little disagreement between, let's say, mostly it happens with the bride, with the bride and her vendor and then all you hear is that, I don't want to work with you anymore let's let's cancel everything and mostly it happens when it's been you've spent or you've dedicated months into this relationship i mean on both sides both of you have invested so much you've built a nice um, relationship and then things are good you laugh you call each other you do everything and then a tiny 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 disagreement sometimes it could be so basic or it's it's it's, it's so simple it's, it's a simple agreement as um time of arrival this one says come at this time no i will come at this time no i will not come at this time and then push and that means months of a beautifully crafted relationship so please Please, please. Or I don't know, is there a rule that says a vendor cannot disagree to um, a client's um, terms or something like that? I don't know if there is such a rule. But if there is not, then it is perfectly normal. In fact, it's even good for every healthy relationship to have one or two disagreements here and there. It is normal. It doesn't define the relationship in any way. Some bright will be like, okay, so if um, we've had a disagreement, then I don't trust you to execute your work anymore. I feel like maybe you won't put your, your heart and soul into the work as much as you would have done if there was no disagreement. That doesn't work like that. The person is a professional no matter what kind of fight or argument or disagreement or whatever whatever you have with the person at the end of the day the person has to execute their their works to the highest level they are capable of delivering so you shouldn't be afraid and also to my own vendors it is also quite unfair that if there is a disagreement or something between you and the bride you'll be like okay i'm refunding your money take back your money if that is it's not nice people argue all the time people disagree all the time it is not the end of the world so you shouldn't also end a beautiful relationship just because you can't agree on something if anything at all get a mediator or most times that's why it's important to get a planner because if you have a planner such things won't even come to you so i'm pleading on both sides whether you're a vendor or you're a bride i am pleading with us all to learn to disagree to agree it is normal on to our next point and that is it is common courtesy to feed your vendors this point is going to sound so biased because well I'm also a vendor. Of course, I want to be treated well, but I also want you to know why I feel it is important. There is so much chatter online about feeding wedding vendors. I mean, we've all seen it. So how can we as vendors communicate to you as clients that we are human beings and we need to be fed if we are working eight to 12 hours a day? Of course, feeding your service providers is never really compulsory, but it's actually one of the most kindest and thoughtful things you can do to show appreciation, especially to those vendors that will be spending long periods of time with you. Um, example, your photographers, your videographers. I mean, these guys are with you 
from your dress up all the way to your last dance. So trust me, making these vendors go hungry is the worst way of saving money. And believe me, I am all about saving money, but that is not the right way to go. And for those that will argue, I definitely know some people will argue, ah, why do I have to pay for their meals? This is not fair. I'm already paying them huge sums of amounts for their services and I have to pay for their meals too. When I go to work, does my boss pay for my food? Now I have to pay for this vendor's meal. When you start calculating all these vendors, can they pay for their own meal? Can they um, 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 eat at their own time or wait for the, um, the event to be over before they eat first of all cringe would you work 10 plus hours without food when you are working at your office or when you're at work don't you have lunch breaks now let's bring that into the wedding space and if you're talking about office work everybody and their grandma that the whole world we all know that if you go to work even if it's you go to work at 6 30 whatever time you go to work by 12 between 12 and 1 universally everybody goes for lunch break now imagine all your reception vendors going on breaks doing your wedding reception it is not possible for vendors to go on break because it is not practical just imagine missing a great photo moment just because your photographer had to go grab lunch or waiting one hour for your first dance because the dj had to step out to get food to eat just just imagine all these scenarios it's not possible and it is not even ideal for you now what happens if they have a flat tie or they are stuck in traffic what will happen? So now you'll be sitting there calling them and then they'll be giving you excuses and all that stuff. Just imagine all these scenarios I'm trying to play out for you. Personally, I would want all my vendors in one place. As soon as they arrive, I don't want any vendor stepping out until after the event is done. It is worth the extra money for me to feed them than to be sitting there wondering or waiting for them to come back from their lunch break. And on the note of your morning vendors, I mean your makeup artists, your hairstylists and all those people, I mean something as simple as a sandwich or even cocoa tea, whatever, that's, that's simple meal can help them because these people no matter how short their stay is i mean sometimes they get into four hours five hours of preparation there are weddings that these guys set off as early as 5 a.m 5 30 a.m 6 a.m i mean there are but how many vendors food vendors are on the way are on their way when they are getting to you so it's it's possible that they might not get food to buy on their way to your hotel providing a simple meal for them is the most kindest and thoughtful thing you can do to appreciate them and now to my last but certainly not the least point Think it through thoroughly if you are planning to have a one-day wedding. If you are planning to have a one-day wedding, my advice is to lower your expectations because technically you can't eat your cake and have it. I mean, one-day weddings are stressful. Everybody knows that. But it has its pros and cons, and that's why most people opt for it. The pro is that um, you get to save money, uh, which is you don't have to pay it for double. I mean, in our system or in our um, Ghana style, we do weddings twice. And you don't want to pay twice for these things. You don't want to pay double for decor. You don't want to pay double for food. You don't want to pay double for drinks and all that. But the con is also that you are now sacrificing time for that money. The possibility of things running late is high. I mean, even with two days wedding, sometimes there's a struggle. So imagine trying to do your traditional wedding, trying to do your church um, um, ceremony, and then now coming for reception. It's hectic and it's a ripple effect. If things go wrong in the morning, there is a high probability that everything else will be dragged backwards. So have an open mind when you're planning a, um, a one day wedding. In other words, have it at the forefront of your mind that there is no perfect wedding. Weddings are life events, it's not recorded. And since you are dealing with human interferences here and there, things wouldn't go as expected. So you need, as a couple, you need to focus on what is most important, which is the marriage itself. You are putting on the ring, you are saying your vows. Those are the things you should be so much concerned about and tune out the rest. As planners, we will do everything within our human power to ensure that your day runs smoothly and everything is on course. But since you are dealing with nature, and human interference it is beneficial to you to have an open mind about unforeseen circumstances and that's it for today folks thank you so much for making it to the end of this video and i hope and pray that with these 11 tips that i've shared with you it will help prep your mind before you even contact any vendor or before you even make any payment or even if you're a friend of the bride or associated with a couple in any way even if they are falling off in a way you are able to tell them that oh so so and so is normal and if you found today's topic helpful don't forget to drop a comment below also comment if you have any questions or a particular topic you want me to cover for you and don't also forget to like share and subscribe like i always say i am also available for all your wedding planning needs so kindly contact me on the details on your screen see you in my next video and Happy planning. Bye-bye.